You want to grow with high pressure aeroponics because you know that it uses space and energy more efficiently? 10x that by going vertically. There's a right way and then there's the wrong way to grow vertically. Be sure you avoid these mistakes. In this video, we will address vertical systems using high pressure aeroponics. Now, when we're talking about going vertical, we are touching a little bit on commercial units. Some of you might wanna do this for your home or as a hobby, or maybe it's a personal system, but this same technique is used for commercial systems. So this video, will address those who are interested in growing commercially, as well as those who want to utilize their space more efficiently. Vertical gardening with high pressure aeroponics system is the best way for you to increase productivity for the same amount of space. However, how do you design a vertical high pressure aeroponics system that will function and operate properly? As I mentioned before, there is a right way and then there is the wrong way when it comes to developing the delivery system for your vertical garden. Now, I hate to say this, the majority of you will do it the wrong way. And that's because there's not much information on the internet, on websites. There's not much information on how to design the delivery system to your high pressure aeroponic system when it comes to stacking it vertically. So what are some of the problems that I have seen and who have come to me and asked how to fix it? One is uneven pressure problems. They have noticed that the pressure in their system is not uniform. It's like almost random. They don't know what the pressure will be at the nozzles, which is critical. Your pressure at your nozzles, you don't want it to drop below 60 or 70 PSI. So that's one of the problems that they have because of not knowing how to design their delivery system. The second one is that they're having poor missing performances or some of the nozzles are not missing at all. They did squirt, squirting. <laughs> they did squirt guns inside there. So what's going on? Well, it kind of relates to the first problem is that the pressure in their system is not consistent where you have some missing nozzles are working and some are not working. Another problem they have is nutrient backflow. And what that, so there's a nutrient dropping or nutrient backflow. And what I mean is that what happens is that when the unit is not energized, all the nutrient that's in your tubing drain out to the lowest unit. So you got like this flooding occurring at every cycle, at the end of every cycle, because of this dumping of the nutrient to the lowest chamber. Another problem is that they suffer gaps or they, they suffer air in their lines. When you have air in your lines, it's gonna take time for that nutrient to clear out that air and before you get any missing at your nozzles. So that's another problem. They're getting air in their lines this air in your line is what is causing the gap misting. Meaning that if this air in your line and your missing interval is four seconds and it takes four seconds for the air to exit out of the tubing, that means that by the time the nutrient is reaching the nozzle, you turn it off and then the whole thing just keeps repeating. So that means that that nozzle will never create a miss to that chamber. Another problem and that they're having is that solids are building up more frequently in their tubing because of not designing their system appropriately. So there are six different problems that I have found with people's systems because not having the right knowledge on how to design their delivery system when it comes to a vertical high pressure unit. Therefore, there are some guidelines and principles that we must follow if we want our vertical system 
to operate perfectly. Okay, so what we're going to do now is actually go through systems, vertical aeroponic system. We will see what was done wrong in these vertical systems and we will see how we can fix the problems of these systems so that they will function properly. Okay, so let's study vertical high pressure systems that were not designed correctly and what we can do to make them function properly. So let's look at these systems and we will one by one address the problems that they have and what you need to do and what you need to keep in mind when you design your own high pressure aeroponic vertical system. Okay, so first let's design our vertical high pressure system. Most systems, my system, I put in a shelf, a standard steel shelf. So let's, so what we see here is actually a shelf. So now let's install our grow chambers. So now we have this, basically this is a stack system that has three grow chambers. Now let's place our plants in our grow chambers. We also added a nutrient reservoir. So now let's add our tank, our tubing, and our fittings. Now let's start working on our delivery system. So first we need to add our pressure tank, our tubing, our fittings, and our nozzles. So let's do that now. Okay, so now we can see here that we have our tank and then we have also our solenoid and then we have our fit fittings which is used to feed this system. Now do you see what's wrong with this system or do you recognize the problems that we will experience with this system? So just to review this system, as we have, we have a vertical stack system which is what I like which is nice because it's easier to clean, easier to maintain, easier to uh, make sure that our roots get complete coverage uh, from the mist and also too it's easier to transport. Now this is what most of either most of you guys do this or those who mention problems what they would do. So basically we'll, they will tie their um, pressure tank to a solenoid. So the solenoid is used to control the misting interval. And then from there, they will have a tube, they will have a tubing to feed the first unit. And then they will tee off and then feed the second unit. And then they will basically use a 90 at the very top level to feed the third unit. Now this configuration, I'm telling you right now, does not work. There are problems with this configuration, which we will address and fix. You can also see here that where we added labeling so that you can identify the units. So first we have growth chamber number one on top. We have growth chamber number two in the middle and we have growth chamber number three on the bottom. All of these chambers share the same drain, which is dumped back into the nutrient reservoir. Then we have the pressure tank on the right and we see how that, that is being tied to a solenoid. And then that solenoid basically feeds all three units at the same time. Let's examine the operation of this system to see where its problems reside. Okay, so let's observe how this vertical high pressure system will perform out in the world. So first, if you notice that the nutrient reaches the first growth chamber, and then the misting occurs. Second, we see that now the nutrient is being elevated to the second chamber and now the second chamber is being misted. Now the second chamber is getting the misting. And now we see here how that the third chamber is also getting its misting. So at first glance, we take a look at this and say, hey, what's the problem? I don't see any problem. It's working. All three chambers 
are getting their miss. And so why do we need to change anything? This configuration will lead you into problems as we will see. Now in the previous video, we were able to see that the system, it appeared to be functioning properly, but it was not. Here is a, here's another uh, take of that same system and to see what actually would have happened. So if you look at the first chamber and the second chamber and the third chamber, do you see what's different between all of these chambers? If you notice the misting intensity or the misting level is different for each chamber. If you notice that the lower chamber, okay, the misting is to its fullest capacity, okay? If you look at the middle chamber, the misting is actually a little bit less than the lower system. And then you go to the upper system, it's even worse where the missing is even lower. So if you actually built this system, this is how it will actually have function. You will notice that your upper chamber will suffer from poor performance, knowing that um, it wasn't really getting the, it wasn't receiving the optimal level when it comes to misting at 50 microns. So this is one problem that we need to address with our new rectified system. So let's continue on with this to see what else is a problem with this system when we design a, de a delivery system to handle three different chambers at three different levels on a single solenoid. Okay, so right now the solenoid is energized. What happens when the solenoid is de-energized? As it's de-energized, we see that the top chamber stops misting. And then we notice that the nutrient that was in the top chamber starts to drain down the tube into our units below. Then we notice that the second chamber stops misting and its nutrient drains to the one below that. Then we notice that our final system finally um, stops misting and then it drains back. So to see that in real time, So to see that in real time, we can see what will happen when the system runs on a single solenoid. So what's the problem here? We have a couple of problems. One is that when the system tries to energize, we have air in, the, we have air in our tubing, okay? So you can imagine what will happen is that there's gonna take some time, which we call resonance time, for the nutrient to leave the solenoid at this point to leave the solenoid at this point and then work its way up to the third chamber. The time it would take to reach chamber number one on the top would, would take a certain amount of time, which we call resonance time. And then the time for the nutrient to reach chamber number two would take a short amount of time. And then the time it takes for chamber number three to reach the time it takes a nutrient to leave the tank to reach chamber number three would be even a shorter time. So what's the problem with that? Well, this is the problem. Let's say that the time for the nutrient to travel from here to here is four seconds. And our missing interval on cycle is also four seconds. So what's gonna happen is that the chamber number three, we get missed, we'll get a miss. Chamber number two, we get a miss. But just when the nutrient is reaching the entry to chamber number one, we're going to kill or deactivate the solenoid. So the nutrient will have never reached our nozzles. So this is a problem. When people call me and they say, hey, my, not all my chambers are misting. Some nozzles are, 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 are functioning and some nozzles are not functioning. And this is the why, because there's air in, in the line. And why do we get this air in, in the line? Well, the reason why is that we got to remember that we have multiple connections to a single tube. So what happens is that due to uh, gravity, um, all the nutrient 
is trying to drain. And it's going to take the shortest path for uh, draining, which would be the bottom unit. We call this nutrient dropping or backflow. And so this bottom chamber, we will say, will be flooded because the nozzles won't be actually misting, but instead they'll be squirting. <laughs> And so these nozzles will be squirting. These nozzles will be squirting out the nutrient that's being drained back from the upper chambers. Now, this can be a problem when it comes to solids being built up um, in your nozzles because anytime when you get a nutrient that's backflow, we are creating a vacuum on these nozzles meaning that if there's any debris in this chamber, okay, these nozzles will try to suck it in and then those solids will infiltrate your delivery system and then later on clog these, clog these nozzles. You get a, um, a buildup of um, solids within your system because you might ask, well, why are there solids in here? Well, that's because you have a filter on the system, just know that your plants will produce solids, okay? So that's one of the problems it's called. And you might ask, well, can't we just put a check valve? Now, what is a check valve? So once again, simply put, a check valve allows flow of your liquid only in one direction and automatically prevents backflow or reverse flow when fluid in the line reverses direction. So what we could do in this scenario, um, so let's say we don't want this backflow to, to happen. What we could do is put a check valve here, put a check valve here, and put a check valve here. What will that do? So what will happen is that the solenoid will energize, force the nutrient to the misting nozzle, same thing here, force it to the misting nozzle, and same thing here, force it to the misting nodule. But what will happen is when this is turned off, when the nutrient tries to go backwards and flow back, the check valve will stop it. It's like an automatic valve that only works in one direction. So this is one way that you could say, well, I can use a check valve to, to stop this. No, you don't want to use a check valve anywhere. You don't want to put a check valve between your tank and the misting out outlets because, because check valves will add a burden to your system. When you're talking about losing pressure due to friction or length of your tubing, a check valve will definitely uh, cause a drop in your pressure. So never ever put a check valve between your, uh, b between your tank, your pressure tank and your, um, your, your uh, nozzles, okay? Fittings is the worst that you wanna do, or maybe valves, but never, never put a check valve in between, um, uh, between your uh, two components here, okay? So we don't wanna do that, right? So we can't do that. So what else can we do to probably to fix this, to fix this problem? Well, let's continue on to see what we can do with the address. Do you have any ideas how we can fix this problem? Okay, so here's the solution to our problem when it comes to the first system. The first system is what majority of people do. Now this system is the way that you want to design your high pressure aeroponics vertical system. So the solution is quite simple. We need to add three solenoid. Each solenoid will drive just one set of nozzles at the same elevation. Okay, so we have this, um, the, uh, the first solenoid here on the right, which is fed into our chamber number one. Then we have our second solenoid, okay, is tied into chamber number two. And then we have our third solenoid, which is tied into chamber number three. So let's see how this one here will operate.
Okay, so this is a very interesting scenario. If you notice that as the solenoids are activated, when they are deactivated, the nutrient, okay, can't drain. Why is that? Well, this is only a single path for the nutrient. There's no way for really air to enter the line. Since all these nozzles are at the same elevation, so here we have solenoid. So when, when this solenoid is deactivated, okay, the nutrient has nowhere to go. This is a single path. So, so that means that this tubing will remain flooded with the nutrient. That means that this tubing will remain filled with the nutrient. I'll explain why that's critical. Same thing here. When this solenoid is deactivated, since there's just a single path for the nutrient, there's nowhere for the nutrient to drain. All these nozzles are at the same elevation. So one nozzle can't drain through another nozzle because they're all at the same ele elevation. And likewise for the uh, upper chamber, there's only a single path for the nutrient, so it cannot drain. So when this the solenoid is off, that means the nutrient here is blocked and they cannot drain back to the tank or to anywhere else. So that means that this line will remain filled also with nutrient. Now why is that important? The reason why is that on the next cycle, when we activate the solenoid, that means that we're not concerned about residue time or how long it's gonna take for the nutrient to get from this solenoid to the nozzle because the line is already flooded. It's already filled with our nutrient. Once this solenoid is activated, these nozzles will start misting instantaneously because the nutrient is just, is just waiting behind the nozzle to force its way out. And so that means that when you demand one second of misting, you will get one second of misting. If you demand 10 seconds of misting, you would get 10 seconds of misting. And that applies to all chambers at different level because the nutrient is already at the point of the nozzle. So same thing for the uh, chamber number one. Since this line is flooded with nutrient, even when the, the solenoid is deactivated, once it's activated, we don't have to be concerned about the residence time or how long it takes for the nutrient to get from here to here because it's already there. It's just not pressurized. So once this solenoid opens up, boom, this line is pressurized and the nutrient is right there at the nozzle already to be uh, converted into a mist. So instantaneously, this nozzle will start misting. And this is the reason why we don't want any air in our lines because as you mentioned before, it's gonna cause um, intermittent misting and also skip mistings. So um, we don't want to experience that. So this simple change to a system will address that. Now, another thing too, let's look at this system and see how it will function in a real world and watch its behavior. Okay, so here's our multi-solenoid system. So you see here that the first solenoid has been activated and the missing occurred. Then the second solenoid is activated and the missing occurred on a second chamber. And then we see another solenoid is activated and we see the missing occurs on the third chamber. And since the missing is already there, okay, um, since the nutrient is already there at the nozzles, we don't, the nozzle doesn't have to wait for its misting. Okay, so now let's watch this demonstration of a properly designed high pressure air pilot system when it comes to vertical gardening. So first, you notice that solenoid number one gets fired for chamber number three. Solenoid number two gets fired for chamber number two. And then solenoid number three gets fired for chamber number one. Okay, so you notice that each solenoid is fired at different times, not at the same time. Now this system is very critical because air never enters our line. 
and that means that the misting at each nozzle will be triggered. So this configuration will be able to properly perform the misting for your chambers at different elevations, as well as function properly so that you do not suffer clogged nozzles. Now, you might be saying that, is it possible to feed a twin system using this same configuration and this by team? Yes, you can. So here's a diagram of what that might look like. Now, what's nice to know is that you might not want to use that technique. You might not want to use that configuration all the time, but you could use it in an emergency. So what I mean is that if you have two vertical high pressure systems and one of them fails, well, you can sister the two systems. Make sure that you apply that solenoid to all, to all the nozzles at the same elevation. So all the um, nozzles on the top shelf can be tied to one solenoid. All the nozzles at the same elevation on the center shelf can be all tied to the same solenoid, as well as all the nozzles on the lower shelf at the same elevation can be tied to a solenoid. So it would take three solenoids to drive this system. So hopefully this will help you in designing your high pressure aeroponic system when it comes to vertical gardening. Okay, so to wrap it up, here are some things to keep in mind when you are designing your high pressure aeroponic system when you're trying to do it vertically. The most important thing is to maintain all delivery outlets to the same level or to the same elevation from your pressure tank that's tied to that solenoid. Once again, the most important thing is to make sure that you maintain all of your outlets to that delivery line to be at the same elevation or height above the pressure tank that is controlled by that solenoid. Number two, when it comes to your solenoids, you want to use a separate solenoid for each grow chamber at that elevation. So number two relates also to one, is that you want to make sure that you use a separate solenoid, okay, for each grow chamber at that elevation. We want to make sure that we activate our solenoids that are tied to different elevations at different times, not simultaneously. Because if we do so, basically we defeat the whole design of our system. So what do I mean? What I mean is that we want to make sure that our solenoids, we want to make sure that our solenoids are sequential with one another. That means that if you have three solenoids, you want to fire the first solenoid, wait for a few seconds, then fire the second solenoid, wait for a few seconds, then fire the third solenoid and wait for a few seconds, then repeat. So never fire any of the solenoid simultaneously. Now, how do you do that if you, you're using a timer? One way you can do that, if you're using a timer and they're all set for the same cycle, what you could do is turn on the first timer which controls the first solenoid, let it run, wait till it completes and wait a few seconds, then plug in your second solenoid, wait for it to run, wait for a few seconds, then plug in your last solenoid, let it run and wait for a few seconds. That way, the firing of your solenoids would be staggered and not firing at the same time. This way, you would be guaranteed that your system will function properly and reliably. So please sit back and relax and watch the rhythm of this system so that you have a feel of how it should operate.
If you like the information that you're hearing and you want to thank me, the best way is to hit the thumbs up below. Thank you.